We are going to do a, a short, simple message called God is Love. It's a message about 1 John 4. And uh, this is a, a message that's going to go a- along with the rest of our service today. And uh, God is love is something that people say a lot, right? You hear that. People love that phrase, God is love. They're like, oh, that's in the Bible. God is love. But usually people say that mostly because they've done something wrong or they're not living the way they should. And they're like, well, it's okay, though. God is love. God is love. Put that on a T-shirt. Put that on a bumper sticker. Put it on a uh, banner because I'm banking on God is love. Well, we're going we're gonna to learn what uh, God is love really means today. Have you guys ever been to a fun house at a carnival or at an amusement park? Uh, a fun house usually has wacky mirrors, right? Sometimes they even have them outside the fun house it's as you go in. But these wacky mirrors, they, they drastically distort your reflection. They're fun to look at, but they would be horrible if that's the mirror you were using to get ready for work, right? If this morning you got up and you said, hey, I'm going to the the family day today, it's a luau theme, and I'm going to put on my makeup and and fix my hair, and you had one of those funhouse mirrors, it would not have turned out nearly as good as you think. (laughs) Well, 1 John 4 teaches us that our love reflects God's love. And if we are bent and distorted by selfishness, we will reflect a bent and distorted view of God to those people that are around us. And that is why love God and love others, which is our motto around here, which is a condensed version of the greatest commandment, is so intertwined. Because God's love for us and our love for God, it it is the same as our love for other people. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. We're going to talk about how 1 John emphasizes God's loving nature as revealed through Jesus' death on the cross. And in today's short message, uh, we will be challenged to recognize God's love and to strive to reflect that love into the world. And so the love that we receive from God, uh, it's our responsibility to reflect that to the people around us. Now, our main text is going to be 1 John 4, 7 through 21, which is an awful lot to read. And so I've recruited some help. My wife is going to come up and read our scriptures today because she loves to read anyways. (laughs) Good morning, everybody. All right, 1 John 4, 7 through 21 in the New Living Translation. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in God, all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. We love each other because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command, those who love God must also love their fellow believers. Thank you. 
that is a that is an amazing chunk of scripture, and I think that we would get so much out of it if we just read it read through it a couple more times. Um, so I would encourage you uh, when you go home to maybe just open uh, 1 John chapter 4 and just read the whole chapter a couple times. I mean, that is just so awesome and such a simple uh, distilled version of what the gospel is and what it means to be a, cr- a Christian and what the love of God is and what it means for us. And, and that's what we want to continue to talk about. But before we move on, I just want you to look around this room. While my wife was reading those scriptures, I couldn't help but the, this row right here, the babies and the children almost out, out, outnumber the adults. And it's just so beautiful. If you have a kid near you, I, just flash them a quick smile in the middle of this message. <laughs> I love having everybody in here together. I wish it was more than uh, just quarterly. <laughs> so after reading those scriptures, the big idea that I want us to grab a hold of today and take with us is the nature of God is revealed to us through the loving sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. That's what those scriptures are explaining to us, that there is no greater love than what God did when he gave his only son to die in our place. So in response, Christians should love one another to further reveal God's love to the world. That's our response. In our response to receiving such an amazing gift is for us to reflect and give that love away to those around us. And our application, our challenge, how to make this a practical thing that we do is this. Our love for one another reflects God's nature to the world. Therefore, we should take the command to love each other very seriously. Sometimes I don't think we're taking it seriously enough. We need to take that challenge, to take that command to love each other very seriously. In his work, Early Christian Letters for Everyone, N.T. Wright says of our our main text today, he says, statistics aren't everything, but sometimes they are quite revealing. The word love or some form of it occurs no fewer than 27 times in these 15 verses. No need to ask then what the subject matter is here. (laughs) There's no mystery of what we're looking at in this chapter. Uh, This is what John most wants to say. This is the heart of his letter. Everything that has gone before leads up to this, and everything that follows in the final chapter solidifies it and rounds it off. Wright goes on to say, To get to the point, uh, stand that statement parallel with the concluding verse of uh, the prologue of St. John's Gospel. This is what John, back in his Gospel in John 1.18, we read this. It might sound familiar. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Back in his gospel, he's starting to tell this story. He's saying, you know how we know God that we can't see? Through Jesus, who came to earth, put skin on, and was our Lord and Savior and Rabbi here on earth. And then he says that his, the Father's heart, he has revealed God to us. And the meaning of that statement is striking. We don't really know who God is until we look at Jesus. When we see Jesus interacting with people, then we get an idea of how God loves people and what God, uh, how God treats people. Now, to see the meaning of our present statement in 1 John 4.12, uh, this is what we just read, or what Rebecca read. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. See the difference? In the gospel of John, God's love is seen and reflected through Jesus. In 1 John, when the church is here and Jesus has ascended to heaven, what does it say? It says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other. God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. This is now our calling. When people see us, they should see Jesus. When they see us, they should see God. That's heavy. Are we reflecting God's love? When people see us, do they see Jesus? When they see us, do they see God? 
That is the command. That is the challenge. And how do we do it? The Bible said it over and over and over. We love those that are around us. We love those who are in our lives. Uh, Bible commentator Colin Cruz points this out. The connection between love for God and love for Christian brothers and sisters, which was explained in verse 20 in terms of the nature and experience of the unseen God, is now shown to be the subject of the command of God as well. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Let me say that one more time. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Here the author picks up a major theme from the Last Supper discourse in the fourth gospel, where Jesus stresses that his disciples' love for him must express itself in obedience to his command. And what was his command at the Last Supper? What did he say? What was he asking them to do? His command is that they should love God one another. Jesus commanded over and over and over to love one another. Google it. How many times is there a one another scripture in the New Testament? It's a lot. (laughs) I'll, I'll cheat and skip to the end. It's a lot. And we're supposed to love one another. I want to close out this short message. Uh, I'm psychologically letting you know this is short. Um, I, want to, I want to close out with an illustration. Have you ever heard someone say she acts just like her mom or he gets his attitude from his dad? <laughs> People make these comments all the time. And parents are proud when their children's behavior reflects well on them, right? When it's like, oh, he's so polite. You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I did a good job, right? Any good parent, though, will, will consider whether or not uh, their treatment of this child has produced either the wanted behavior or the unwanted behavior. Um, 1 John 4 teaches us that our love for one another reflects on our father, on our heavenly parent, God. Are, we, are people making comments about us like, oh, he, he's very uh, uh, Christ-like, or are they saying other things? Because if they're saying other things and we're reflecting poorly on God, it's not God's fault, right? It's our fault. So when we meditate on God's love for us as demonstrated through the cross, we can't help but to be changed into more loving people. And so one last time, I want to share with you the big idea that hopefully we can all grab a hold of and take home, and that is the nature of God is revealed to us through the loving sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And in response, we should love one another to further reveal God's love to the world. When we love those around us, we are revealing God to them. They are seeing God through us. Our love for one another reflects God's nature to the world. Therefore, we should take the command that was given to us to love each other very, very, very seriously. I want to pray uh, about this message real quick, and so I I would invite you to just join me and pray. Lord God, I thank you for this amazing message that we get to read straight out of your word. Um, I pray, Lord God, that you will just uh, continue to let us think about this and how important it is and how many times uh, John mentions love, mentions your love and how we're supposed to reflect you through loving others. And uh, I just pray right now, Lord God, that you will just continue to speak to us as we go back into some musical worship and as we uh, do communion, Lord God. I just praise you and I thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.